Hey everyone, welcome, welcome back here to my channel where I play Plan Zoo. My name is Nissa, and today we are making a habitat here in Small Sea Zoo for the little blue penguin, which is the smallest penguin in the world. If you want to talk a little bit about the little blue penguin or simply see how I built this habitat, then please keep watching. Okay, everyone, and uh, today we're gonna have a little uh, class in how weirdly my brain works because this habitat started weeks ago. I knew I wanted something with water in this zoo. Um, as some of you guys know, the idea with Small Sea Zoo is making small habitats, but in the, instead of focusing on making it big and lavish and all of these beautiful giant habitats then instead focus on making it smaller more specific and then try different things that i wouldn't do normally and uh, you're gonna see here in a minute i'm gonna make some walls with something quite unique it is actually it it is uh, from a uh, mod uh, i will mention but it is made to be fabric but for me it very much looks like a kind of rubbery texture uh, that is a kind of anti-slippery texture uh, and that's why i wanted to use it here because i have actually he heard both about zookeepers slipping in habitats and getting hurt and also animals actually doing the same when they are out in the wild of course they would be on wet slippery rocks and such but in general in zoos over time there will be accident and that is really really easy to work around by just having something a little more rubbery um, and this is just a texture that i have seen various places both in kits uh playground and pl kids pools but also actually for habitat building i don't think i have seen it in zoo stone but i have seen uh, private habitat buildings uh, using textures kind of like these normally it will then be some kind of liquid so you have a normal floor and then or a wall piece and then you have this rubbery texture that is kind of have these grains uh, within it and then they use that to kind of slather on and it will give this uh, texture that i'm trying to reach here but anyway i'm going back i wanted to build something with this and water i was very focused on that and it doesn't hurt that the standard color for it is blue uh, again very pole like and then we come a little closer, I think a week or so ago, about the time I built for the Phoenix Fox. I haven't decided what I wanted to do in this area, but I just thought because I made this natural kind of uh, hill downwards, so you will have multiple levels around here. When I built the Phoenix Fox, I did think of by putting two or three habitats in this, but looking at the shape of it and then having the possibility of building levels uh, and it just fitted in with my water habitat there next i just needed to find the perfect animal and i do honestly believe i did that here i did go through a uh, zoopedia first to see if a zoopedia have something that fit again i actually often go for a uh, planet to official frontier animals if they match what i want to do do and um, really nothing really piqued my interest but i did get a little hot on those penguins but then i started thinking about well there's so many kind of penguins and at least some of this one of the species from the game is actually a really big penguin it's still a small animal but it's a big penguin and i only want one penguin in here so that was kind of my next thing was to figure out okay so which penguin should it be and luckily a wonderful mother chose to make a mud for the smallest penguin in the world 
which is of course the little blue penguin and yes little is a part of their name uh, this mod is made by leaf and mega gaming racks and i have a link below for both the mod where you can download it and i also have a link to my video on it uh, if you want to go in and see it real up close and such before deciding if you want to download it and at that point i actually spent so much time thinking about how i wanted to do this build i never planned the entire build but what i do like to do is simply to make a plan of ideas of what i want here it was for instance the shape the water levels the texture here for the fabric wall rubber wall that i really wanted to use uh, and the rocks i wanted to use and the idea about making the plants very clean uh, that was the idea i really wanted to go with um but i never plan out like make it drawing and everything needs to be in a specific way ha i have the ideas and then I start and then sometimes my ideas change, sometimes they don't. But I have spent a lot of time thinking about this habitat. So what I did was simply thinking that I already made this video. And around 4 a.m. this morning, Saturday morning, I just remembered that I haven't actually made this video. And not the build either or anything. Um... So what I decided to do was to go to the kitchen and make me something to eat. And then about two hours went by and I will say it is kind of normal for me to be awake at all times of the day because I have some issues that do that sometimes there's several days between me sleeping so that's not weird at all. Uh, so around 6 a.m. I actually started building this then i've used a few hours building it uh, and then i started shooting cinematics and then we got some uh, spoiled food in here i wanted the keepers to remove so i waited two e hours more to get them to remove it and they didn't so there are spoiled food in the cinematics today um and now i'm editing it and uh, it is currently 12.02 and for those who don't know, my videos go up at 14 uh, p uh, sorry, 2 o'clock uh, p.m. I think it is. Um, so, um, yeah, it's, it's a little stressful, but uh, honestly, I decided not to stress more than absolutely necessary. So if I'm a little late today, that's okay. And now you know why, because my brain is weird sometimes. <laughs> I will also just mention that between the things you see, you know, where I built the base of the habitat and between where I put the animals in, I will change the color of the water. I have figured out it doesn't make sense to do that while I'm filming, basically because you cannot see that part of my screen where you can see what I set the settings at. And at the same time, it's really difficult because I go out of the water, in it to the water, move the camera around a lot and just... It, it doesn't make sense for you to see, so just be aware. I chose the tropical uh, water. I deepened the color a little bit and then I made it less transparent. So I have the blue walls instead having the base color of the uh, water, but still much more transparent than, for instance, the uh, clear clean water or in the game so i just wanted to be able to actually see the animals uh, because sometimes in clean water in the game it can be quite difficult actually and especially because the little blue penguin is blue it does actually have a different coloration where it's more like a dog gray but most of them are blue and they kind of disappear in the dark blue water so that color change just had to happen. And it also helped a lot, especially if you have the sun behind um, you in a habitat where you have water, sometimes you really can't see through the glass. So that helps out a lot also. Next up, we have the stones here I started to, and that's because one of the reasons why the little blue pigment fitted in here were because they actually live 
in both drier uh, and tropical areas in Australia. And I just thought, well, the Fennec Fox is not Australian, of course, but these more drier habitats kind of working in together. Again, tropical is not dry, but these warmer habitats at least working in together. And then when I started building 6 a.m. after no sleep, I thought, penguin, it's cold. So we make the rocks this bluish color to really emphasize on that coldness. Um, and then halfway through the build, I changed the color of the stones because I noticed that they are Australian and not that cold. So that's a little mistake, but I cut through most of the recoloring because we have a lot of stones in here and it took a while. Anyway, I think that's my rant for today, so let's talk a little bit about the little blue penguin. As mentioned, the little blue penguin is actually called little blue penguin, but it's also called blue penguin. So if you feel it weird or anything and don't want to say little every time, you can simply also say blue penguin. It is in the Avis class and if you think of Avis, it's more like aviary, which is all of the flying animals or animals that at some point in their evolution were supposed to be flying. This of course also include animals like the cassowary of course, which doesn't exactly fly, but at some point in the evolution it made sense that it should be able to fly. But when we zoom in a little closer than that, we come to the order. And this is an order I don't think we have talked a lot about on my channel. It's called, <laughs> sorry, Fincy Forms or something like that, uh, which is a order of flightless swimming birds, which is pretty much penguins. So they actually have their own order. It includes 24 uh, extinct and extant species. Um, I will say though, the family of Sifhensisidae, which is again the first part is exactly the same. The difference is orders ends on formus and the family ends of day because it's a family of course. It is the exact same animals, 24 flightless swimming birds being penguins. When we come to the genus, we are in the Eudupchula genus. And this one only holds two species, which is the Eudupchula minor, which is the little blue penguin, and the Eudupchula minor albusignata which is the white flippered penguin which if i know my latin names right this means that it isn't two different species rather it is the species of the little blue penguin and its subspecies the white flippered penguin um that's normally what it means when they get a third Latin name. Anyway, as mentioned, the little blue penguin is the smallest penguin in the world and it weighs between one and three kilos and which is 2.2 to 6.6 pounds and are only around 30 centimeters in height, which is 12 inches. Very, very small little thing we have going on here. To describe the little blue penguin, I will mention that it is a penguin, so it doesn't have wings, it has flippers and all of these normal penguin stuff. But where most penguins either are black or gray on the 
back and the top of the head, the neck and so on. These have this blue or bluish color. Now in the game they appear very very blue this variation. They can be that blue but uh, most commonly they will either be or appear more like a bluish gray or a bluish black. Um, again they did put variations on the mod so there are these gray variations uh, though the most of the gray one you can see here is the babies um the height difference is not that big but you can see the babies are fatter um but especially because normally when you see them in the wild they will probably be with and when they're with they appear darker and therefore the blue color will not be as easy to see but also because genetics and the really bright blue variation is not the most common one uh, as far as i can see the beak is a grayish black or a black gray uh, i'm not sure how the description here uh, describes it as both and it's a little weird because i would think it was almost the same the irises are a pale sil silvery or bluish gray or hazel um yeah that's a big vi variety but i will say as a pale silver silvery gray color is quite beautiful i have seen quite a few of them here and also with this very very light blue colored eyes it just complement the blue back of them very much and i really really love it quite beautiful animal they are of course having whipped feet like penguins do um and their feet are pink and therefore not as pigmented as some other penguins of course they have this white or off white belly side uh, like penguins do again it is still penguins they are native to uh, oceania more specifically new zealand most so in the coastal regions though um which i think most people can picture they stay within the uh, temperate climate zones though the mud states that they are not temperate animals uh, and they stay in the intertidal zone oceanic pelagic zone caves coastal coral reefs eustarius neuritic zones and marine area uh, so a lot of water of course um but i would love to see them dive around corals i think with that blue color on the back and the sun hitting through that crystal clear water i think it would be so beautiful and all of the corals in the background it would be so beautiful but that's not what we're building today because this is where i try to build something i normally don't build and uh, here you can see i changed the tone of the stone i didn't make it darker i just made it a more tan toned off white color instead of the blue tone i had before just to kind of emul emulate a more warm tone uh, and then i make a two flower beds in here and then the rest of the plants will be outside the habitat especially because these penguins are so small and we don't want them to disappear completely because of the foliage in the habitat penguins are almost famous for this kind of penguin marsh they do and since little blue penguins actually lives in caves but really like being in water and need the water to be able to find their food they sometimes have to march quite a bit of distance for safety in number is a fair logic for animals that live in these giant colonies it's not a group it's not a pact it's not anything nearly as so controlled again a lot of animals have like hierarchy and different ways where we know who decides things and who can breed and all of this Peng penguins don't have that they just 
are here and accepting everyone else and we just do this because it's in our dna and we just do as we always done we don't plan out we don't have one who decides when we go eat or something like that we just do it uh, and because they can sometimes have a quite a bit away from the oceans to their caves it is extra important for them to actually march unified and for some bigger predators they will actually appear as one giant animal that you really wouldn't hunt or you can be lucky enough that it's any animal choose to actually hunt you guys well hopefully you will be in the middle and they will take those closest to the edge it's yeah it's animal logic it's the safest way to be for the penguins because they can't really run and they can't really protect themselves so safety and numbers are the best for them however when they have a really good year and breeding goes well and we have a lot of babies they actually do organize a little bit and i don't know exactly how they do this again they don't have a leader or a leader group or anything like that but if they don't move all of the move together maybe the babies go in one a group or that go with the group over there mom go with the group over there and then they can kind of go in the tempo of that group um yeah i think i just confused things even further i'm sorry about that but different groups so they don't have to go to the water at the same times and stuff but what is funny is that when they get back to the nest then they will again be in a group but it will be in the exactly same group they won't switch around uh, at the beach and then if you want to get back earlier or something you go with the first group no you go with the group you came with which is actually a really high sign of intelligence another sign of intelligence is that these are very very vocal animals some animals are vocal simply for being vocal like some dogs just are very very noisy um sometimes without reason but here they have a wide variety of different sound and every single penguin actually have its own voice which actually can register normally us humans have kind kind of need computers to be able to really specifically tell who's who but the penguins can hear on quite a big distance who is calling to them at the same time again there's a big variety of uh, these calls and they can hear the difference some of them are used in courtships some of them are used in territory um disputes some of them are just to kind of group up and some of them are signs of aggressiveness again all kind of different sounds when we look at the threats for the little blue penguin they actually have quite a few one is simply as mentioned that they are really easy to hunt if you want to and therefore they have uh, quite a big number of different predators that can take them something as easy as you go uh, at the beach with your dog and your dog runs away out in the water take it it probably can catch the penguin in the water but you know what i mean just runs away takes a penguin at the sand on the sand or something like that it's really really easy and pretty much everyone can catch a penguin on land if you really want to don't try it please um another issue is that there are predators themselves and eat fish but because of big commercial fishing in a lot of these issues uh, areas the number of fish are simply going down and therefore there are at periods or at specific times not enough food for the penguins which again sometimes they just have to starve for a few days sometimes it, they will actually starve to death which is something that no one actually wants besides that we also have pollution it can both be of course 
uh, noise pollution. They are living in caves again. And if someone really wants to disturb them in there, it's really, really easy. But it can also be such as uh, water pollution, trash in the water, oil spills and so on. Besides that, even further, we also have issues with the human population in Australia that simply are growing. And uh, yeah, I, I won't tell you not to have kids down there, but it is an issue for the penguins when your kids move out and need more space to live. However, at current time, the numbers in the wild currently are at 469,716 breeding individuals and uh, it's it's actually quite interesting that it specifically say breeding individuals because penguins are one of the animals where we know a lot of gay individuals in and as some of you guys know they made for life so uh, yeah breeding individuals so their number is still thriving and uh, that's great it really is and therefore also according to the IUCN red list they are at least concerned animal which we just love to hear here on my channel anyway guys for now enjoy the cinematics and I will come back afterwards Okay guys, that's all for today and let me just apologize. I know there was spoiled food in this cinematic, but I waited two hours for the keepers to remove it and they didn't. So I just didn't know what to do and I was on a schedule. So um, sorry about that. Anyway, guys, we're going to end it here. And as always, you know the drill, like, subscribe and turn on the bell notification. So you know the next time I upload a video, I really hope to see you again either in the comments below or in the next video. Bye guys!